let's make some improvements to our scatter plot. This time, we're going to start by switching from the qplot syntax to the more formal and verbose ggplot syntax. I mentioned this in lesson three. The ggplot syntax will let us specify more complicated plots. So just as a reminder, this is the qplot syntax in order to create the scatter plot. ggplot is another plotting function similar to qplot, and it has slightly different syntax. Here's the equivalent code to produce this scatter plot. The main difference between qplot and ggplot is that we have to say what type of geome or chart type that we want. In this case, we want a scatter plot, so we're going to use the geome point. You can see the full list of chart types in the ggplot reference, which is linked in the instructor notes. The second big difference between the two plotting functions is that ggplot uses this AES wrapper. We have to wrap our x and y variables inside this aesthetic wrapper. Don't worry about this too much, we'll cover this in more depth later. Now, I want to get some ranges on my age, so I'm going to run the summary command on age to figure out the lower and upper limits. The minimum age of a user is 13, and the maximum is 113. Now, let's clip the x-axis at age 90 and at age 13. This seems reasonable, since users who are younger than 13 are not permitted to use Facebook. And we're really not that confident whether people who report being older than age 90 are telling the truth. To do this, we're going to use the xlim layer. Now, I'm not going to pass xlim into ggplot. Instead, I'm going to use it as an additional layer outside of it. Notice that we use the plus operator to add a new layer to our figure. And this is going to change the appearance of our x-axis. I really recommend that you add one layer at a time when building up plots. This allows you to debug and find any broken code. And there we go. There's a nicer plot with our users ranging from 13 to 90 years old.